that will bring along the other qualities with it. So continue to cultivate compassion and um, wisdom and the other qualities of enlightenment will follow uh, in due course. Just like, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it says in the scriptures that um, if you invite the king, naturally his ministers and his uh, attendants and so forth will, will come along. You don't have to invite them separately. So in the same way, if you, um, if you invoke compassion, if you develop compassion, the other qualities will come along uh, as a matter of course. So certainly you're, 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 you're on very safe ground uh, cultivating compassion, even if for the time being you feel that you're somewhat lacking in wisdom. One question here. You, you said that uh, when you have great compassion or when you have compassion, uh, wisdom will develop <coughs> by itself. And uh, I believe everybody do have compassion, but it's only in the different levels of compassion. How to develop this great compassion? Even when you are doing the sadhanas, well, I believe uh, many people also don't know how to develop compassion from doing sadhanas. Well, um, there are many methods, of course, for developing compassion, and uh, these are laid out in some detail um, in various texts, like the Triple Vision. Um, one very basic method, of course, is the, uh, the contemplation of... Uh, uh, all living beings uh, as having been once uh, kind mother at one time or another. Uh, uh, compassion is also developed through the consideration of the self, uh, of, the, of the sameness, of the equality of, of, of self and others. It's also developed by the exchange of self for others. Uh, uh, dedicating one's own happiness and merit to the well-being of others and taking upon oneself the um, suffering and unwholesome actions of others. So there are many, many methods for, for developing compassion and this is dis they are described at, in, at some length and in some detail in the text. Um, so I would say that basically it's just a question of uh, studying those relevant passages and um, running back and forth in one's own mind what these uh, teachings say and then um, meditating upon the meaning of these scriptures. This is where it's important to um, support, I might say, or strengthen one's practice uh, of, a, of a sadhana, of a ritual of meditation to support it with uh, a, a sound um, understanding of what the uh, what the texts, what the, what the Mahayana scriptures say about developing compassion and other qualities so that when we come to practice the sadhana and the sadhanas are, are powerful and um, concise tools for awakening compassion and developing compassion uh, but they will work better uh, if one has a good um, foundation and has already uh, familiarized oneself through study and consideration and meditation on the meaning of compassion and in this way has weakened uh, one's own uh, egocentrism because essentially compassion is developed through understanding the uh, equality of self and others um, the 
interconnectedness of, of self and others. Um, and this, this can be, uh, this understanding can be developed through uh, a systematic, uh, through systematic exercises. Um, you might call them learning exercises, and, and those exercises, as I say, they are, they are presented in, in quite a lot of detail in, in texts like the Bodhicharya the Triple Vision, uh, and so forth. So, I don't think I have any, um, any special method other than those, but I think those are, are quite sufficient and effective in themselves. Uh, can uh, just by chanting uh, mantras like Om Mani Padme Hum, can that develop compassion? You know, this is a difficult question because, of course, um, some people may be able to develop compassion just by chanting a mantra such as Om Mani Padme Hum, but I would say that um, it isn't for no reason that um, the Tibetan tradition in general and the um, Sakya tradition in particular uh, does recommend um, thorough study of what are called texts, texts of, of, of graduated teaching. And, um, you know, um, each tradition uh, within the... Uh, Within the Tibetan tradition, each each school has its own favorite text, uh, just as Sakya has the the Triple Vision or the Nang Sum, um, and it's not it's not for for it's not without reason that these texts are recommended and these texts are suggested, in fact, as introductions to tantric practice, as introduction to the practice of of a sadhana. Um, and in fact, traditionally many, many years were spent on the study of these texts and on meditation on the various topics that are treated in these texts. Um, nowadays we have a tendency to uh, skip over or to skip through these preparatory texts, these, these uh, introductory texts rather quickly. Um, and to to uh, place uh, our all our emphasis on on a mantra or on a fast method for developing uh, compassion and the like. Uh, and I would just say again that I believe that the mantras and the the, the so-called fast method works better if it is practiced together with or or subsequent to a good grounding in the uh, in the preparatory teachings uh, you know certainly mantras like Om Mani Padme Hum have a certain power in and of themselves a kind of if you like a mystical power and uh, if we have cultivated compassion and understood um, the meaning of uh, the equality of self and others perhaps in past lives then uh, perhaps, probably, the simple recitation of a mantra will be enough to reawaken that compassion within us, compassion that we have experience of, if not in this life, in past lives. But if we don't have uh, that kind of latent compassion, it's going to be uh, more difficult, even for a mantra as powerful as uh, the... Uh, uh, the mantra of, of Avalokiteshvara to, to bring about that compassion. It's also, I think, important to remember that even with regard to a mantra, for example, with, the, with regard to the uh, mantra Omani Padme Hum, we have many explanations of this mantra. 